aunt had that shop and great and our granddad. Yeah, they built that shop. Top of uh, the same field as that one, and uh, that one there, uh, that's my mother Peggy. We used to climb up the wall when the train come along, get on the back of the train, in between the trains, and ride all the way along there to high spin, right? Get off at the high spend, go under the golf because the golf course was here. <laughs> we used to take the shovel to slide down the petty. <laughs> Aye. But this day we decided instead of taking turns, we'd, we'd take the tin bath and we'd both get in. <laughs> so we rattled down the petty with a with a tin bath and here my mother spotted one. She was leaning over the front gate and the back gate and spotted us, so we've got a good yacht and a pair of us, in case we put a hole in the bath. But this one over here, it burned all the time. That's right, yeah. The sulphur and all that was just thing. It burned, it burned. When we, used to, we used to go under the bridge and it used to just look like the moon. And you used to get along there and you used to get that way in the wood. And the chum, so that's the only way you could really get in them days. But that burned all the time, that. Street, that, that's where my grandma was, number 17 Trent Street. Yeah. That's a Hofner Colorama, the one I've got. And you've got to remember, I was still at school when I got that. So my mother used to have to pay for it weekly. And it was bought from the, a shop in Newcastle called Clem Millard's. 29 guineas. I've still got the guarantee card for it. I happened to be in Egypt and I rode back and told them how hot it was and I would just love a pint in the hotel. And he rode back and said, well, I can't send you a cool pint, but this is the next best thing. And that was in 1955. to sit on a cracket at the side of the fire with me cousin on one knee and me on the other and he used to tell us both stories now there's only me alive that remembers that because my cousin died a long time ago as well called them field days and they used to get a farmer's field and I think it was up the, up the Bend Road and the the met church where the chapel members would um, bake and they used to carry it all up the Bend Road in well there's a bath there's a tin bath there they used to carry them all up it was just like a treat for the kids because they, they didn't get much it was a after the strike, and you know, it was life wasn't very easy, and uh, it was just a, um, I suppose the the community spirit was getting, and I think my grandmother's obviously had something to do because she's that too on there. Two me mates, 
Uh, he's just died recently, Brian Temple. And this one here, John Mawson, he was in uh, he was in a pub in Eastbourne talking to Geordie, and his son went up to him and says, uh, Are you from the North East? He says, Oh, yes. He says, um, uh, He says, A little place you probably know called Chopwell. <laughs> he says, Well, you might know me dad, Ronnie. <laughs> he says, oh. he says, I went to school with Ronnie because we played in the same football team and we drank together and everything. And John I ask, I says, Ask him if he's still got his uh, sailor suit. He joined the Navy. For months and months, he came to the dance with his... I said, you're not going to eat clothes. So I get me a woman with a sailor suit. My dad was a character. He was full of fun. He was a real character. But when I was born... I was premature. They didn't think I, I was going to survive. So at the time after I was born, my mum had hung cough. So my dad had to feed me with a little bottle. It, it was the size, like a little fountain pen. Two drops of milk every two hours. My dad fed us for six weeks, every two hours. And he had a hard shift at the steelworks at the time. And Dr. Weatherspoon lived next door to us. And Dr. Weatherspoon's wife said to me, Valerie, if it wasn't for your father, you wouldn't have been here. I am now 87 years old and I've got great memories of Chopwell. But the one that stands out in my mind most of all is one winter when I was very small. Now in those days, everybody mixed in with everyone. Well, there was a shortage of coal because the colliery was stopped, because the coal couldn't get along the line to go through to Spain, to go to the wherever it was going to be distributed. So this night it was snowing, bloody, blizzards and everything. Big knock at the door, grandfather goes to answer it, and I, I was very young, and I hear him say, can't do that, mind you. You gotta do that, you'll get murdered. They'd be fetched up about it, mind. He says, Father, all I'm asking you to do, I want to, I want your peels. Well, how many peels have you got? And the bath team. So what happens was, was such a commotion later on, and we found out at the top of the street there was a wall, and along it was about, I think there was eight or nine tubs full of coal. Tons of it to go along and to spend. It was stopped, it couldn't go any further. Well, the miners, they shinnied, if you know what I mean, they shinnied up the lampposts and they put ropes on pails and on bath tins and they filled the coal. And it was distributed all over Chopwell. Whether you were a miner or not, everyone got coal that night. And I'll never forget it because my grandfather said, Hey, my God, he'd be fetched over the coals. <laughs> I remember the date. It was September the 6th, 1956. That's when we first met. And that's what we used to love, going to all the dances around Chotwell, Highfield, Greenside... Fabulous with Eddie Stoko and Ken Mannon, the Silver Dollars used to play as well. Born and bred in Chotwell. If the curry's in half, I would just spell Chotwell. I love the village, always have. And when people call it now, I say don't call the village because we had a few people came in that spoiled it. But we've got a lot of lovely people in the village that's trying to do a lot of good. 
and uh, nobody will ever call Chopwell in front of me. Um, but I was born here. My dad and mum were very young when they had me and my sister, very young. And my dad got into politics because they had no money. He said, I want to make a better life for my kids than what we've had. And their better life was the day they got on an aeroplane and they were going abroad for the first time in their lives. And I have it on recording and, or in a letter. And she, he says to me, Mom, when they got up in the plane, Vera, did you ever think in your life that we would ever get into an aeroplane? And they were so excited about that. And my view is that when you've had nothing and your life gets better and you get a little bit, my mom always used to say that she was rich the day that she had some money in her purse on a Friday from a Monday. Because when you got paid on a Friday and you paid everything out that you had to, you had nothing for the rest of the week. They just had to, we had to tick what gro- I did, tick what groceries on at the shop. But then things got better. And um, so we appreciate what we've got. A Bevan boy was somebody that came and worked in the pits when there was nobody left to basically do the work. But I think this man here was called Jim. And he came and stayed with my grandma and granda in Three Woodside Terrace during the war. And he kept in touch for a while. Anyway, one Saturday morning or afternoon, knock at 19 Woodside door, and uh, this man and woman were standing, who I didn't know, and he said to me, does Davy Collins live here? He'd actually been to the dugout, because the dugout was where my dad drank long before he took the dugout over. And they said, oh, he lives in Woodside Terrace. He says, hey, that's funny, that's where they lived when I lodged with them when I was a bedroom boy. So they couldn't tell him exactly the number, but they said, just knock on the door. So I, and he knocked on 19, and I said, Dad, there's somebody up here. And my dad came, and they recognised one another straight away. And he introduced us all to his wife, Betty, and they kept in touch, even after my dad died, Jim then died, and Betty and my mum kept in touch until Betty died. Being a volunteer means you get to meet people, you get integrated with the situation, what's around you, you actually helping people to move on in their life and helping yourself to move on in your life. And the benefits of being a volunteer is immense on your social life. And it is a very positive thing. So I believe volunteers are very needed in this country. What it is, is we have lots and lots and lots of food that is very cheap and it stops it going to landfill, which I think is a good thing because this food is good food and it is good to eat and it's good to save money now on a Wednesday night we have a food market and we have a Persia Field coffee drop where you get a sausage sandwich biscuit cake and it's all what you think it's worth and the customer grew and grew and grew and now we have the cap in the community centre and we have the hall in the community centre Uh, like a lot of people, I was bored, <laughs> and I went to the community centre one day to one of the councillors' um, meetings that they, they have, um, and I was just explaining uh, on the bit of a loss. He says, have you tried the men's shed? What's the men's shed? Well, the place around the corner, so uh, that's where it starts. So I owe Dave Bradford quite a lot, because it was him that introduced me to the idea. Men's sheds are similar to garden sheds. A place to pursue practical interests at leisure, to practice skills and enjoy making and 
Mendon thinks the difference is that garden sheds on their activities are often solitary in nature, while men's sheds are the opposite. Uh, they're about um, social connections, friendship building, sharing skills and knowledge, and of course, a lot of laughter, and in the chocolate shed, a lot of tea drinking. <laughs> For a lot of it, it gives us somewhere to go on a Monday. Uh, I think it's it's more more a social thing. Um, we we talk about every subject on, on earth. Uh, we find out a lot of what goes on in the village. That's another thing. Some of the things we help out with. We've done a lot of benches. Uh, we've been involved with the raised flower beds. We've done work here and uh, just out here. So uh, it's been it's been a, an interesting time. Mm-hmm.